The second subject that brought us here today is about emotions and health, right? You'll see that it's very much linked to the first one. It's about something very different, but there will be a linkage between the, the first one and the second one. And um, we all, in on this earth, we all deal very well with some kind of a side of us, one side of us. And we deal poorly, not so well, with another part of ourselves. So if we draw any of us like this as a set of two sides, there is a side, a side that we deal better with. We like who we are, we like the outcome of who we are, we like what we produce, we like what we do, we like how we react, and we tend to call this side of ours the positive side. Right? Because it's the side we deal well with. And then there's another part of our life, of our being, with which we don't deal too well. We have some reactions and we say, why did I react like that? Some things we don't do well and we say, I would like to do this better. Some things in our <coughs> physical body that would like to be different and we don't like them. And we tend to call this other part the negative part of our body. Um, Jung, Jung was a psychologist who changed the way of seeing of uh, the 20th century. We would call this our light side and this our shadow side. And uh, we've been raised to hate our shadow side. We've been raised in a way that we needed to hide that shadow side. Because our parents, some members of the clan, professors, teachers, friends, would tell us, you can't be that way. You can't behave that way. That's not supposed to be reacting that way. You're not supposed to have those deeper types of reactions. So any kid, any kid that tender age will never survive on earth without parents' love. It is impossible to survive without love. So that kid, which was once us, will do the utmost to never lose that love. So what happens is that we find some defense mechanisms. The first one being hiding this to ensure we keep on being loved. And this starts at two, three, zero, three years old. So we grow in our lives seeking approval, looking for people's approval. And above all, mom and dads, grandma, granddads, the clan members, uncles, aunts, aunts, uh, and then teachers at school, then little friends. We don't like your shoes. Either you buy other shoes or we don't like you, don't belong to our group. What happens, he gets home and he says, Mom, I don't want these shoes anymore. Buy me some shoes that will allow me to be part of this group. And what happens is, little by little, 
we start becoming a phantom of who we should be. Because distance to disappear. And of course, all the mechanisms when we grow older become stronger. Always seeking for approval. Then when it's we become teenagers, adolescents, adolescents, we want to please that girl or that boy or whatever. So we need to do everything to please him or her. And we have to avoid things that can be not so pleasant. So we keep on selling ourselves. And that sale of ourselves is always <laughs> skipping the shadow side. In our universe, in our universe, Everything must be expressed. And what is hidden will always be revealed. So it is crazy to hide a part of me seeking approval for someone. Yet we all do it. Why? Because it starts at a tender age, as I said, and we cannot live without the people we need the love from. The first thing I should say is that this side is not negative. It's a positive side. And humans only grow through the shadow. Not living the shadow prevents me from growing, from evolving, from living the evolution of the being whilst I'm on this earth. So by hiding and sometimes annihilating this shadow side, I stop evolution. Um, mankind, humankind, humanity, has stopped its evolution at least 10,000 years ago. We haven't evolved anything for the last 10,000 years. Well, we've evolved in the way we master matter. Computers and machines and animals and the planet. But as beings, we have evolved bullet zero. It's more important for us to go to Mars or to the moon than to live our shadow. So what are we doing as humanity? Fleeing ourselves. We are running away from ourselves. We have the nostalgia of who we were. And uh, this shadow side exists with a purpose. And the purpose is to be revealed in this life or the next. And if I don't reveal it, my sons and daughters and my grandsons and granddaughters will do it. So one of the, actually one of the Portuguese way of living, and it's really spread all over the country, is when you have scandals, <clears throat> when there are people who have uh, cheated on someone, when people have been robbed or lost a fortune, or have to flee their country and go somewhere else. Nobody talks about it. Here in Portugal is terrible. Nobody talks about what happened in previous lives with our ancestors. And what happens is many of us come to reveal what our parents and our grandparents have hidden. So the fact of revealing who I am fully would not only be beneficial myself, as we'll see in a minute, 
as well as it will be very beneficial for all the people that descend from me. In the universe, the only purpose of the universe is expressing itself. And nothing in the universe expresses itself as it is not. Everything is expects, expresses itself as it is. And being at oneness with something is to express myself fully. Now, in unity, at one. If I get rid of a part of myself to please any of you, for instance, just as an example, I will not, will not live at one with myself. I won't live in unity with myself. I will live in separation. As if this part of me would be my biggest enemy. When I do this, and I try to only live out of this, let's see if you can see the green. Can you see the green? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes the green is okay, right. When I only try to live out of this, I'm enhancing my ego. You know, ego from Greek, from the Greek, it comes from egon, egon in Greek. And egon means the center the axis. So the ego wants to be the center of the world. He is self-centered. And we don't know that when we are two, three years old. But we are self-centered. Because should I not be self-centered, I wouldn't care about what you would think of myself, my shadow. But since I'm self-centered, I do care about how you feel about me and what you think about me. So I'll do the utmost for you to like me. So I will be separating from myself. This is what the ego does. So what is the opposite of ego? Self-esteem. Self-esteem. And what is self-esteem? Is when I accept and I live everything that I am. So I first live at oneness with myself. Example. There are so many people who want to live some kind of a spiritual life. The first step for us to live in a spiritual life is to live in unity with ourselves. It is um, impossible to live spirituality segregating myself from a part of myself. So it's impossible. People like to, people would like to live in peace in the world. We look for peace. And people say, we'd like to see peace in the world. Before peace happens in the world, it needs to happen inside of each of us. And we are literally at war with ourselves. The day on which I start being at ease, at peace with who I am, with everything that I am, light and shadow, I will be the conveyor of peace on the planet. It is not possible to create peace if I'm at war in myself. It is impossible. So, there's something else coming from this, which is, I said, everything that is hidden will eventually be revealed. Right? Can be revealed by myself or by my the people that descend from me, so sons, daughters, and uh, grandsons and granddaughters. But there's more. 
Every physical symptom. Every physical symptom. Comes from the hidden part of my shadow. So, every time I have a symptom in my life, And now let's talk about physical symptoms. There's mental symptoms also included here. Or uh, emotional symptoms. People have panic attacks, huge anxieties. You know what I mean? These are symptoms. This is the body, the body revealing what our shadow has been hidden. So, according to the type of symptom I'm experiencing, I know what type of aspect of my life has been hidden. My body tells me that. So, every symptom we have has been created by our consciousness to reveal a part of ourselves who haven't been lived. So we are just expressing through our body what we have skipped from our lives. So in theory, and I repeat, in theory, we should bless our symptoms. In theory, right? Because nobody wants to have any strong and degenerative symptom. But in theory, yes, because it is if my purpose is evolution and is being at one with myself. I should be rather happy to know what my body is trying to tell me about a certain aspect of my life that I've neglected. Easier said than done, right? We have to be aware of that. Easier said than done. But that's why hiding the shadow is crazy. Because it always comes back to us. It is absolutely crazy. It comes back to us either in a symptom or in an event, an unpleasant event in our lives. And that's not the body revealing anymore. It's life revealing or through my descendants. So, I can, can be a hidden shadow, can be revealed through symptoms, physical, mental, or emotional symptoms, can be revealed through events in my life, suddenly, I'm dealing with you, and uh, you rob me. Or, I'm dealing with you, and you aggress me. Or, I'm dealing with you, and uh, you lie to me. Whatever, okay, I'm just inventing. Or, I had a crash in the streets with you, your car and my car, right? Or, I have a relationship with you and I know that you've cheated on me. You know what all these events are doing? They are revealing a part of our shadow that we've neglected. So first, physical, mental and emotional symptoms, and then, we call, what would you call signs of life? Signs in our life. He did me this, she did me that, he did me that. What am I attracting this for? There must be a purpose, and there is. And the purpose is to get back to realizing that I've been splitting myself, separating myself. And then the third one is in new generations. So, Nobody came to this earth to be maltreated, to be badly treated by the universe. It is us who create our obstacles and difficulties. It is us and nobody else. So we must assume responsibility. Of course, when we are ill, when we're sick, when we have a disease, it's very difficult 
to remember I have to get responsible for my disease, for my illness, for my sickness. And it's sine qua non. Means it is compulsory. I really need to become responsible because it is always something that has been hidden. I can also be living something that all my clan has hidden for years. And that's called karmic. But it also exists. And I've decided to come in that clan to reveal what has been obscure, what has been hidden for so many years. See, I mean. Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. I, I, I know the answer, but um, is you are saying, okay, this information. My question is, where did you get this, this knowledge that we have these physical symptoms because of eating, or uh, you know, I have a crash with the car, and some of the people in the room are saying, why is the crash of the car is related with my symptoms? Or, or where did you get that information or that experience to to say, you know, that to say what you are saying? I said before, I'm going to give you a long answer. I said before that anything that happens in the universe, anything that exists, needs to express. When I express, when anything expresses in the universe, they express a purpose, a function. So, everything that is expressed has a functionality. So everything we have in our body, in our life, has a certain purpose, a certain function. When I have a symptom, it shows my functionality is not very accurate, right? If I have a cold, a strong cold, well, I'm not being very functional in the part of my, my, my life that is not, it's not an inner conflict that is that strong. It's just a cold. But I have no, if I have pneumonia, and then probably I will be expressing an inner conflict that uh, shows I'm not working with the functionality I should desire, I should be desiring to use, to, to, to be working with. So um, what I did for years is understand what is the functionality that is affected? And when you see the functionality that is affected, you understand the part of your body that has been affected, the part of your life that has been affected. How did I get to know this, you said? Uh, by the way, you know what the word function means? You know what function means? You don't? It's a Latin word. In English, we use rather purpose, which is also a Latin word. Uh, that comes from proposito in, 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 in Latin, proposito. Um, pro means ahead, and posito means to put. So purpose etymologically means putting ahead in my life, something that I should put ahead in my life, on my path. Function means to pay. Sorry. To pay, <laughs> from Latin. Function means paying. So we're all paying something in this life. When you have a function, you're paying. What does it mean? You're serving. We don't know the function of a tree. We don't know the function of a river. We don't know the function of a mountain. We don't know the function of the sun or the moon. Yet we do know the function of things made by human hands. This, 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 this. We all know the function. And by the way, kids, babies, recognize things through the function. When you say it's a chair, he doesn't understand chair. 
but he understands the function. And the function of the chair is that you sit up. <laughs> if you stand on a chair and you ask a boy, very young one, what is this? He doesn't know. Because normally a chair is where you sit down to eat or to paint. That's what kids do. But you stood up on a chair and you ask, what's that? And the child goes, bananas. She says, normally it's where he sits down, but it's standing there. Is that the floor? Or if you lie on a table. The kid doesn't know what that is. Because normally he lies on the bed or on the floor. But now he's lying on the table. Or if I sit on the table. So kids get to know things through the function of everything that is done by humans. The problem is we don't know the function of everything that is not done by humans. It was done by a creator somewhere. But they also have a function. Well, we get to know what the function of the pancreas is. We get to know what the function of the liver is. We get to know about the liver, the pancreas, the liver. We get to know the, pancreas, the function of kidneys. So, when the functionality of those organs for which the theoretical function we have no knowledge of, but we've understood that the kidneys filtered the blood. And the liver, for instance, segregates amino acids. And the pancreas, insulin to send it to the blood, for instance. I'm just giving examples. Now you know that when a pancreas has a problem, and if it's an endocrine problem, you know the pancreas has exocrine and endocrine, right? Endocrine means within the blood. Exocrine means outside of the blood. And the pancreas has two functions. One that has to do with the blood, the blood sugar, with the insulin, and always have the correct blood sugar. And then it has another part that has to do with the enzymes that it sends to the duodenum for the assimilation, the digestion in the small bowel, right? So it has two functions, one that is digestive, the other one that is uh, uh, blood uh, levels, um, blood level, no, sugar blood levels. If somebody has diabetes, that's somebody who has a problem with the blood, sugar blood levels. It's a person who has a huge problem with love. That's where that person lacks love like hell. If you have somebody who has a problem in the, a cancer in the pancreas, that's the digestive part. It's the enzymes. The person is killing herself with the enzymes. It's again a problem of love, but somebody who is so demanding, so demanding, so demanding, so demanding with herself or himself, that he ends up creating something that will kill him. He must disappear. It's the quickest of the cancers that we know today. If we start to understand the function of the diseases, and I wrote a book about 500 of 600 of them with the experience I got from 1994 until today. You read the book, you see a symptom, and you say, gosh, is this what the body is telling me? Yes. How do I know? I go through the function. Through the function. I'm not the only one to do this in the world. I've been to many seminars, I've met a lot of intelligent people, I've read lots of books, I went to many seminars, and then I created my own experience. And I started reading, I started a compilation of knowledge that I had for years, and then I wrote the book in 2007. And, and I've been upgrading it every year, because I, I receive more people with more symptoms. Uh, oh, this is a new symptom I have not put in the book, so now, next year, I'll gather all new symptoms and I'll put them back in the book. So the book is going thicker and thicker every year because I'm getting to know more and more people with symptoms. Now, back to where we were. So one of my jobs, one of my professions, is to understand what's wrong in the person's life according to their symptoms. What is 
our inner consciousness calling our attention to. Now, this, back to the origin, right? We said that these symptoms come from hiding this shadow. But we haven't said what this shadow is yet. What is this shadow? What are we hiding continuously? Yes, we are hiding behavior, right? I said, there's a certain behavior. Shall I write behavior in the American or the English way? That's always a problem. Okay. This one is what, English? This is English? Right, okay, it will be English. Oh, there's an American lady there. Is that okay for you? So, yes. <laughs> we have the same with the Brazilians. We have exactly the same. Now, it's behavior. It is true. But every behavior is triggered by what? Always. Every behavior, every behavior, everything you perpetrate is driven by what? Yes, emotions. So, what is the essential part of our shadow? Emotions. Hello. And what we do? We hide emotions. Nobody knows how to deal with emotions. So we hide emotions. Since we don't live emotions, we don't even realize we're not living our shadow. How do you live fear? How do you live anxiety? How do you live anger? How do you live sadness? How do you live envy? How do you, do you live grief? How do you live hate? How do you live guilt? How do you live I don't know. Shame. What do you do? You can come along. Skip this. Yes? You can come along. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, you know what? Artists don't deal with emotions. I'm sorry. They do. No, they don't. No, they don't. Let's ask the other painter in the room. Do you think artists deal with emotions? <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> we all are leader with emotions now. Yeah. We all are what? We all do. We all do. You all do? Yeah. Nobody does. That's why we have so many, so many, so many symptoms in the world today. People live in separation with themselves and they don't live emotions. They think they live emotions. We don't live emotions. We control emotions. We block emotions. We hide emotions. We don't live emotions. We don't. What happens? They manifest. Anger. If I don't live anger, where does it manifest? Gallbladder and liver. Well, yes. And people who have deep anger, normally it's the gallbladder. People are very angry because they feel the lack of something, the lack of love, the lack of respect, the lack of recognition, the lack of money, they can have huge liver problems. And it's amazing because you go to, you study, you go to university, you get out of psychology degree, you still don't know how to deal with emotions. You know how to separate them, how to block them, how to hide them. You never live emotions. Yet, emotions. Look at this one. Does this word emotion sound you familiar? Motion. Huh? Motion. Motion again. Movement. Remember the word motion this morning? This morning. Uh, yeah. Go forward. It was about to move, to set in motion, movement. Now we have this word again. 
And it comes from Latin, from ex movere, which in English would be ex motion. Because movere comes from motu, and movere means movement. Okay? You know what ex movere means? Moving out. X out, moving out. So the very word, the very meaning of the word emotion means move them out. And what do we do? We stuck them in. No wonder we get ill. It's amazing. Amazing. So what are you doing with the mouth? Even for a painter, I'm asking, eh? Even from a Zimbabwe painter, or Rhodesia, should I say? <laughs> life, life began before Rhodesia. Huh? So your question was? No, yeah, exactly. I was just pulling your leg to see if there were some emotions connected with the Rhodesia, the Zimbabwe thing, but it doesn't seem to be. It, 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 that's a political issue. I know, I know. It's not an emotional issue for you. Fantastic. Great. So we don't need to bother, to bother about that. How do we move them out? <coughs> Beg pardon? We move. <laughs> <laughs> to enlarging the step, focusing on the technique of the step, and then a new breathing frequency, and it's done. <laughs> it is interesting, huh? because you know what? Um, I started this because I had lots of physical problems. Lots of physical problems. And I mean degenerative ones. And um, for years, I tried to understand why. And um, it's amazing because you look for it, you go everywhere in the world, and everybody says you must leave all your emotions, right? Have you, ever, have you ever heard this? Emotions are supposed to be lived. You should live all your emotions. And I say, how? And nobody would answer. Nobody would tell me how to live your emotions. So what would they do? They would block them. They will hide them, they will stuff them in, they will never move them out. How do I move out emotions? Crying. Crying, Crying can be self-pity. Crying can be self-pity, baby. Mm -hmm. And self-pity is not an emotion. It's a behavior. Embracing Embracing emotion. Beautiful word. How do you embrace emotion? Mm -hmm. So, you are very angry, and I say, accept it, Tiago, accept it. What have you done? You've stuck it in. You didn't move it out. And then you have the specialists of acceptance. <laughs> you know, today, the pink spirituality, the beautiful pink rainbow spirituality, and rainbow, I don't mean the rainbow, I mean really the beautiful sunny spirituality of acceptance. Accept it. Accept it. And what do people do? They stack it in. Accept it. You are shy, you are shy, or you are you are ashamed. Accept it. Shlof. Guilty. You are angry. Accept your anger. Live in mindfulness. Chuck, you stuck it in. Oh, you are envious. You're jealous. Accept it. Wah, you stuck it in. And everybody does this. And then they come to me. They say, Louis, I have a problem. I know you have a problem. How do we move out emotions? You know what? I understood this, well, some 20 years ago. But before I understood it, really integrating it in my behavior, I'd say it's 15 years, not more. And I've been working with this for 30 takes a long time, and most people 
Just tell me what doesn't make any sense. How can you accept an emotion? How can you do accept an emotion? Pay it out. Vipassana. Let's do, let's do a Vipassana retirement. Things. Fantastic. Have we dealt with emotions? Bullet. Zero. None. Nobody has dealt with emotions here in Gavitasana. There was a guy who wanted to go to today, and I was expecting to tell him that, but he didn't come. Uh, ah. He's not ready. He's not ready, no, he's not yes. ready. I understood that from the post. What they do, they stuck them in. I know you're struggling now, because you're asking, Louis, tell me how you live emotions, how you live emotions. I will tell you in a minute. But don't you feel yourself struggling with the thing? Come on, tell us. Come on, tell us. Shit, what are you waiting for? What are you doing? Why are you longing so much then before you tell us? For us to understand that something that it's a knowledge that is not, it is there, but nobody uses it. Thank you, Mark. I am pure emotion. I think so. Yes, I am. You, we feeling him. You, you was so strong with emotion. Project him. How old do I need? Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you feel? You live emotions with three verbs. It's going to look very theoretical, okay? And then it's get, going get to get to go very practical. Acknowledge emotion. Observe yourself. Living the emotion and verbalize the emotion. Mm -hmm. And the strongest of them all is the third one. Every single person I've met with a cancer had stuff stuck in that wasn't verbalized. And it was strong emotions. Cancer is always. A huge emotion that I have not verbalized. Verbalize what? What I feel. Not what you've done to me. Not what happened to me. Verbalize what I feel or how I feel and not what was done to me or what happened to me. Imagine. Uh, I'm living with uh, a person and suddenly I realize that person cheated on me and I say how could you do that I trusted you how could you do that to me how could you am I verbalizing emotions nope I'm qualifying his or her behavior. This is behavior. I'm not moving my emotions out. I'm aggressing him or her. I've trusted you so much. How could you ever do this to me? Or something happened. It's not someone, but something. And I say, why me? God does not exist. This is unfair. This is terrible. Am I verbalizing emotions? Nope. Nope. Now, even painters, <laughs> even artists, verbalize what they think are emotions, but they're not. Because they're just verbalizing 
what someone did to them or what something that happened to them, something or someone. But they never verbalize their feelings. Yes, tell me. Yeah, I'm sorry, but with artists observe and they verbalize with love. Yes, beautiful, beautiful, yes. And they reconcile their observation with the person that's with them and what they see outside them. And they never verbalize. They, they verbalize. They like the, 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 but the purpose of the art is to make it, and that is the verb, that is the verbalization. Van Gogh died with a poor, a very poor, poor life. He was some hell of a painter. Beautiful. Others loved Van Gogh. What an unfortunate life. What an, a lack of happiness. How could it be? He never knew how to verbalize. Now, look. Uh, artists think they verbalize. They never do. Um, it's true. But that's not only artists. I'm playing with the artists because of you too. But you, you, this is not nothing against you because all of us we do that. We talk about what he or she has done to us, or about what has happened to us from something or someone. Verbalizing feelings is not what you've done to me or what has happened to me. I feel absolutely. I feel absolutely furious. I am furious. I could kill people. I really feel hate. I feel destroyed. I'm really struggling here. This is so tough to me. This is really strong. I am so unhappy. No about moving out of notions. It's only me, myself, and I. I am verbalizing what I'm feeling. And uh, let me tell you that when people come, and they start learning to verbalize not what was done to them by something or by someone, but about what they feel inside. This is a catharsis. This is what I, can, what I call the emotions alchemy. You know how it ends up? It ends up, it ends up with crying. As you said, you weep. But not because of self-pity. Because it really comes from the guts. And it's moving out strongly. Then you can heal yourself. It's impossible to heal without moving out what's stuck in you. So, so many people that I've known that were dealing with strong symptoms with their health, they would really aggress everything and everyone and never have the humility to verbalize what they were feeling. You get from emotions must be someone important. Her husband is coming to fetch her, I guess. And she is well indoctrinated. It's just. No, he's in England. Oh, he's in England, so she's going to ask you. Now, that lady told me she would have to leave the half an hour before. Um, the Scottish lady. Yes, she, 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 she was very nice and she, she warned me. Um, it's really a kind of humility that we start having, really. And then you get from emotions. We have nine emotions, nine. I'm gonna give them all. Five, we have them and animals have them as well. Fear, anger, grief. Grief because of having felt abandoned. Envy or jealousy and sadness. Sadness because we've lost someone, right? So grief and sadness are very close, but they're not the same. Here I was abandoned by someone who lives still here. 
I felt I was second choice, you know, I was not first choice anymore. Here, I've, I lost someone forever. This is sadness, this is grief. So I repeat, amongst animals, they all have these ones. Fear, anger, grief, envy, or jealousy, whatever, and sadness. And then our ego, our human ego, invented four more that animals do not need. Anxiety. Then uh, our domestic animals, they feel these four. Right? Mm -hmm. But in wildlife, they don't have them. Because you know what, domestic animals, they're like us. They're just exactly like us, so they, they got these four. But wild animals don't have these four. Anxiety, hate, guilt, and shame. These are the nine emotions we all need to deal with. When we start recognizing, acknowledging the state in which I am, look at me, I am in such an anger. Observe myself as angry as I am. I am terribly angry. Then I start verbalizing. I am furious. I could kill people. All right. Now what happens? You're becoming self-conscious of your emotions. When you become self-conscious of your emotions and you start expressing them, they are no longer emotions. They are feelings. For those who work with chakras, emotions are in this chakra, feelings are in this one. For those who know about chakras. Emotions are in the orange chakra, feelings are in the green chakra. It's all about self-awareness, self-consciousness. When I start acknowledging and observing and verbalizing my feelings, Emotions drop and feelings start. Then I fear. And then I'm starting to heal myself. And then healing starts. It can be any type of healing. It can be physical healing. It can be a problem with money. A problem with my job. A problem with my business. A problem because I don't feel inspired and I don't get the inspiration to paint or to sculpt or to write or whatever. Whatever problem I may have, whatever problem, whatever issue, doesn't need to be physical, mental, or emotional, whatever issue I have in my life, the first step, which is compulsory, for me to start digging on healing is to acknowledge it observe myself in that state of mind, verbalizing till I'm crawling and even crying, and then the world starts again. Um, the Caucasians are not good at this. The Latins are better. Because the Caucasians don't cry. They stuff it in. So, the far away, the more far away you are from the equator, the less people verbalize. The closer you are to the equator, mid in the southern or the northern hemisphere, it's the same, the more people verbalize. Latins and Africans, they verbalize. Southern African, Southern Americans, have you seen a Southern American verbalizing? Whoa. An Italian? Whoa. Not, nothing compared to a Finnish or to a sweet. You are sweet. Oh, there you are. All right. It's true, you're sweet. <laughs> but what is amazing is that the Latins and the Africans and the Southern Americans, they think they verbalize, they don't verbalize. They just shout. They just shout. They scream and they weep. But it's never in a verbalization because they do not acknowledge, not observe, and not verbalize. And they cry like hell for self pity. Why me? And it's never there. So a Caucasian that learns is much more effective, more and more effective than an Italian that learns how to do the emotions of him. Caucasians do not like too much this, especially this one and crying, weeping, what's this? But the other ones, the Latin Americans and the Italians and the Portuguese and the Northern Africans, oh, they cry like hell. 
but they don't sort it out. Because they're all away from moving out. They do not verbalize what they feel, they verbalize what has been done to them. Does anybody have questions? We, we came to our time, huh? we, are, we are two minutes away from the, the end. This hour was very quick. Anybody has a question? I was yes. Just, yes? I was just observing uh, this process you described that uh, it can be difficult to do it yourself. And this is where therapy comes in, yes. where you have someone who helps you in that process. Yes, the most therapists, ther what do you call it? Therapeutic. Uh, Therapist. No therapists, thank you. Most therapists, they don't know this. No. You don't find this written anywhere. No. No, nowhere. You go through psychology, you go anywhere you want in the world, you don't find it. Took me 20 years of strong physical issues to understand it. And I was looking for it and looking for it. And it's the Kabbalah that helped me. It was going through the Kabbalah that it helped me. It's not what the Kabbalah said, but there was something they told me and I said, shit, this is it. And most people, what they do, well, there was a big fire. Everybody goes, oh, the psychologists are coming in, the psychologists are coming in, what do they do? They never do this. People never verbalize how we feel. They say, everything's gonna be all right. Everything is going to be all right. It helps a lot. To so someone who has been, is the, the house is burned down, and somebody comes and says, everything is going to be all right. Great for you. It helps a lot. <laughs> Most therapists, I'd say, all those I know, they don't know how to do this. So now you know something they don't know. Bring it to Sweden. <laughs> Peggy? Uh, is it more like the words with the frequency, or because singing can be like, a verbalization or is it really out of the mouth? Uh, because you can do sports to be angry, like eating things and use your anger. <coughs> Singing is like painting, sculpting, writing, whatever, whatever art. Mm -hmm. You can sing and never verbalize how you feel. But you can be painting and verbalizing how you feel. And you're painting tears, not of self pity but of what you're feeling, and you're healing yourself, and you're painting something absolutely great. It can be singing, not painting anymore, but singing, and it can be singing from the guts, expressing how you feel, and not being sorry for what has happened, which would be self-pity, and not sorry for what somebody or someone has done to you. <gasps> that is absolutely therapeutic. That is emotional coming. That is a catharsis, and that is healing. So we have to be aware, self-observation, self-acknowledgement, self-consciousness, to understand what am I doing now? Am I expressing what I'm feeling or am I just dealing on self-pity? Self and most of the time it's self-pity. Um, there's a music a song, a beautiful song by Quinn, sung by Freddie Mercury in 1990. Too much love will kill you. Do you know this song? He killed, he died of AIDS. He died of AIDS and he um, torn between the lover and the lover you left behind. And then at a certain time he says, but he never read the signs. Too much love will kill you every time. It's a beautiful song. There's no self-verbalization, never did it. That guy would have needed a lot of help. But everything he verbalized, was never from inside. It was about what people would do to him. <laughs> and uh, and they, those people need compassion. My life is about compassion because I meet people like that every day. And um, people do struggle and they deserve compassion. And it's difficult to have them going from verbalizing self-pity to verbalizing strong feelings. It's not easy. Of course, let me tell you, verbalizing self-pity lowers the vibration. Verbalizing like this, you know, your vibration is at the zenith. 
it's unfair. And to heal, you need to raise your inner vibration. It's fantastic. It does not always work immediately, but from my experience, it always gives some possible, possible possibilities, not expectations, results. I've seen a lot. I've seen a man who got rid of AIDS, never had any symptom, and he was my friend. He didn't have HIV, he had AIDS. Mm -hmm. And he was purely cured, and the doctors would say, we don't understand. And it's amazing, he was French. He was a friend of mine in Paris. It was amazing. Something really came up as a vibration. There are lots of things we can still do in this world. You see, uh, I said before, getting old is fantastic because you get wiser and wiser. I didn't get this when I should at 30 or 35 when my, all my problems started. But I did eventually get it when I was uh, in my 50s. And it was because I was much more self-observing, self-conscious. Um, and of course, much more focused on movement and less on results. So the first thing I tell people, and now I'm merging the two sessions, the first thing I tell people is, forget about getting healed. Let's enjoy the process of the emotion and alchemy. Forget about getting healed. That's the worst thing that you could be doing. Thank you very much for your attention. It has been a pleasure to be here with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.